Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and what I want to do in this short video is teach you a little bit about how we try and structure drawings here at Redefine Horizons. And this video is for my buddy Danny, and also for my CAD tech, Austin, CAD Ninja in training. And so we've got a specific way we try and set our drawings up here at Redefine Horizons, and a very specific reason why we do that. So I want to try and explain that for Danny and Austin, and hopefully it'll, it'll help some other surveyors and GIS professionals and civil engineers, architects maybe, um, and give them some thoughts on how they can structure their drawings. So I should mention this system is a work in progress. Um, AutoCAD's complicated. We're always finding new ways to work. Uh, we're always trying to, to work more efficiently. So, uh, But this is currently the system we're using. And uh, you're welcome to leave me, I'm going to post this video on YouTube. You're welcome to leave me comments or feedback in the, in the comment section below the video or, or on LinkedIn. So we basically group our drawings um, into three broad categories. Okay. So the first category is what we call base drawings. The second category is what we call annotative drawings or anno drawings for short. It would help if I could spell. Okay, and then the third category is uh, what we call sheet drawings. And I'm going to explain what each of those are. And then we'll talk about a couple examples, and I'll explain why we set the drawings up the way we do. Okay, but before we do that, let's talk about what goes in each one of these. And this, this system here applies for topographic mapping, aerial mapping, hydrographic mapping, and boundary mapping. So in any of those. Any of the above. Okay, same basic structure. Okay, so the base drawing just has the line work from the mapping. Okay, so uh, it only has points, arcs, and lines. Um, probably not going to have hatching. So just basic points, lines, and arcs. Uh, that's all that goes in the base drawing on the on the proper layers, obviously. And the annotative drawing. So the, the base drawing, the, the interesting thing that you want to remember about the base drawing, let me get a different color here, is uh, the base drawing is designed to be scale independent. Okay, so it doesn't have a set scale. Uh, objects are drawn at, you know, in real life units. Independent, independent. So scale independent. Okay, the anno drawing, let's talk about what goes in there. So the anna, the annotation drawing has all your text, line labels, curve labels, uh, multi-leaders. Um, it also has your hatching and your symbols. So it has things that are scale dependent. Okay, so an annotation drawing is scale dependent. That means if you're working on a, on a project where you have more than one scale, you're going to have more than one annotation drawing, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And then finally, we have the sheet drawings. Sheet drawings are also scale dependent. And essentially, all the sheet drawing has in it is a sheet that represents, uh, it has a layout tab that represents a sheet in a work product. Now, when I say work product, um, in this case, I do not mean... Um, I do not mean drawings that are delivered to another consultant. I mean something that can be delivered as a PDF, essentially. Okay, so it's a, it's a digital version of an old paper sheet. So that's what we use sheet drawings for. And each sheet drawing, each sheet in a, in a drawing set, so this is important, each sheet is its own drawing. So, for example, if I've got a parcel map that has four sheets, there's going to be four sheet drawings. Okay, so each drawing has the layout layout tab for that sheet, and the and the border, the title block, and the viewports for that particular sheet. And they each go in their own drawing, and there's a reason we do that. Okay, so. Something to remember about the base drawing. The base drawing is essentially infinitely scrollable. 
Okay, so it's not it's not set up as a sheet. Okay, it doesn't have a particular scale. Um, basically, you can scroll it to the edge of the mapping limits. Okay, annotation drawings are going to be set up at a particular scale. Okay, and so are sheet drawings. Uh, but again, annotation drawings are also kind of infinitely scrollable. Okay, so they're scrollable to the edge of the mapping limits. Okay, but the sheet drawings, if there's anything in model space that's specific to the sheet drawing, um, it's only going to be related to that uh, view, the footprint of that particular sheet. As a general rule, the sheet drawing is not going to have stuff in model space other than XRFs to these two drawings up top. We'll talk about that in a minute. But generally, the kind of what I call unique content, the content that's unique to the drawing, the sheet drawing is going to be in the paper space tab. Okay, so a couple of important things to remember here. And this is just my system. There's different ways to do this, but the rules that I had for the drafting we do here at uh, Redefine Horizons, we do not use annotative objects. So we don't use annotative text or annotative multi-leaders. I think annotative objects are the root of all evil. I understand why AutoCAD came up with them, but uh, they just caught a lot of headaches. So we don't use annotative objects. Um, and even if you did, even if we did use annotative objects, I think we would still use this system. Um, the other thing is uh, we don't do drafting of model space stuff in paper space. So sometimes you'll you'll have surveyors kind of get around this problem. They kind of skip the annotative drawing and they do all their symbols and hatching and text labeling in the paper space sheet. Uh, that's gross. I don't like that. Um, so basically, the only thing that should be on the viewport in our sheet drawing is the viewport. So we don't layer stuff on top of the viewport and paper space as a general rule. So like the match line and the other things that, that are needed for the sheet layout that actually go in the annotation drawing. Okay. All right, so let's talk a little bit about how these XRFs are set up. And then I'll, and then I'll go over an example of why, why I developed this system. Okay, so let's say we've got a job where we're going to do a record of survey. Okay, so we've got a record of survey that we're doing, record of survey map. Okay, here's what that's going to look like. In our job folder structure, we have a folder called Mapping. That's where all our mapping work products go. Okay, this is not where the base files go. The base files go at, at the same level here, the base files. Let's just draw it out because this will make more sense. So we've got a topo folder. we got a boundary folder. And we've got a UAV aerial folder. Okay, and then we have that mapping folder. So, and it, it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but uh, mapping, the mapping folder is for work products. Actual, essentially PDF equivalents of a paper map. Okay, so in the topo boundary and UAV aerial, those where our base files go. Okay, and in, in our office, we have two kinds of base files. We have a working and a final. Okay, and then there's actually some different, we have some different types of drawings depending on what you're doing. So topo, we split into 2D, 3D. Boundary, we might have a search drawing, we might have a working resolve drawing, and we might have a design drawing, boundary design drawing. But basically, base files are separated into, into two types, either working or final, depending on the state of the job, the status of the mapping. Okay, but mapping is where we put the actual files. So under mapping, we might have a folder for a record of survey. Okay. And then in that folder, we're going to have our sheets. Okay, so we'll, we'll have a cover. Okay, and then we have our map sheets. So that might look like map 02 would be the second sheet, because our cover sheet's generally not a map sheet. So if I had a, a record of survey with one cover sheet and two map sheets, it would look like this, something like this. Cover DWG, map 2 DWG, map 3 DWG. Okay. All right, so let's erase this and go back up to the mapping folder. Okay, so in that record of survey folder here under mapping, okay, we've got the cover. UWG. Okay, in that folder, if we split this up, we have paper space and model space. 
Okay, in the model space, you're going to XREF in your base drawing and your anode drawing. So base and anode get XREF in here. Okay. And as a general rule, the base drawing lives in in the top top level folders, topo boundary or UAV. The anode drawing is going to live in the mapping folder. Okay, at the root under mapping. Okay. Paper space is going to have the actual layout, title block, notes and blocks. Okay. So that's kind of how this is structured. So the base and anode drawings become XREFs in the mapping folder. Now, why do we do that? Why do we develop this structure? So I'm going to use an example. There's basically two reasons. One is to allow efficient creation of map products at different scales. And the other is to make sure that uh, work products are always using the current and valid line work because line work changes as projects develop. So I'll give you an example. We had a project we're doing in Martinez and uh, we had three we just started and we've already got three primary work products. So we had a wall map. Okay, that was a big map the attorney wanted to be able to lay out on a table. We had uh, a record of survey map to do. Okay, and then we had a plat for a land description. So these are all work products that are coming out of CAD. Okay, PDF. Okay, they're all different sheets. So this was, uh, I think we did this one 48 by 36. The wall map was 48 inches by 36 inches. Okay, the record of survey map by statute here in California has to be 18 by 26 inches. Okay, and the plat by statute is 8.5 by 11 inches. Okay, and obviously the wall map is not at the same scale as the plat. Okay, so what we do here is we have our base drawing. Okay, our base drawings. And that, that only has the, it only has the line work in it. So in this case, we had two bases. We had, uh, we had a base for the, uh, resolved boundary. So that's kind of existing. And then we had a base for the boundary design because we actually designed an access easement. Okay. So we had two base drawings. Okay. Then we had a, we had two, we ended up with two anode drawings on this one. So I think we were at one to a hundred. One inch equals a hundred feet. Okay, we had one there. Oh, I should have drawn that a little bit differently. Okay, and then we also had a one inch equals forty and we're drawing. Okay. And the wall map, so all three of these drawings x in the resolved base file and the design base file. That just gives you the line work, okay? And then we were actually able to get the wall map and the record of survey map to share the same scale. So they both referenced in the 1 to 100 annotation drawing. Okay, so it saved us a little time there. But the plot had to be smaller because we're limited to the 8.5 by 11 sheet. So in that case, we x in the 1 inch equals 40 scale annotation sheet. Okay, and then, of course, we had sheet drawings for each one of these. I think there's six or seven sheets for the plat. There was four sheets for the record of survey, and we had one sheet for the wall map. Okay, so that's the system that we used. And I think I can't remember on the YouTube channel. I think I've talked a little bit about um, how we how we separate, for example, our boundary drawings into uh, working and final, and then we have a boundary search, a boundary resolved, and a boundary design drawing. What goes in each of those? If I don't have a video on that, I will I will definitely post one. Uh, but I hope this helps Austin and uh, Danny. And, um, and hopefully it'll help some of you other guys. So one thing I forgot to mention, so let's, let me draw another diagram. This will be the last diagram, and then I'll wrap this up. But. So I talked a little bit about, um, that system allows us to work at different scales. It also makes sure that everybody's working with the current set of line work. So we go back to the example. We've got that, uh, boundary design drawing. Okay. So this is a base file, right? Okay, so let's just say this is x in now to two 
two drawings, so it's in the wall map. And it's in our plat, let's say. Okay. Now, in a lot of situations, this boundary design could be fluid, right? So this could change, this line work could change, depending on how negotiations go with the landowners and the title company and just some different things here. Okay, so the reason why we don't, we want this set up like this, because when we up, make updates to the, to the line work in the design file, we want that to be reflected in the wall map and the plat. And some people might say, oh, well, hey, I, that's no bueno, you know, I want to make sure if I send something to the client on a certain date, I want to know what I sent. Well, I understand that, so then they, the answer to that is you archive. So when you before you make a change, you make a copy of this boundary design drawing with the date, and you archive it. That's how we do it here. And then, you know, you should have in your communications folder, and for us, in our communications folder, our out folder, every time we send something to the client, the PDF goes in there, and if you're worried about being able to prove what drawings you sent to the client, then you make a, you make a copy of these, of the sheet drawings and the base drawings and the annotation drawings, and those go into the out folder in a, you know, a, a drawing folder or a reference folder, okay? But to me, it's more important to make sure that the current work products are being produced with the up-to-date line work than it is to, um, if you can, you can work around, if you have a desire to track every, you know, keep a copy of every drawing in its version as it was sent to the client, I understand why you want to do that. You can do that with a good archiving system, tracking your deliverables. Um, but you don't want to ha allow that desire to, to break these leaks here. You want to make sure that when somebody's going in to plot work products out of these, um, sheet drawings, that they're linking to the right line work file. So here's what you don't want. Okay. What you don't want is the wall map to be X-refing in its own boundary design. And then the plat to be X-refing in its own boundary design. Because if you change the design now, the boundary design, you got to remember to go in and change both of these files, right? And that problem gets exponentially worse as you multiply your work products. And these might not be XRFs, so the way I've described it, it can be XRFs, but you know sometimes people will actually insert this data into the model space of the work product drawing, and it's, it has the same negative effect. Okay, so we don't do either one of those. We want these to be linking to a common reference file up top here. Alright guys, I hope that helps. Hopefully it wasn't too confusing. And uh, if, I, if I think it benefits you guys, I'll do some more posts about how we structure drawings. Maybe I'll, I'll do some screen recordings on the computer and show how those get set up and what it looks like, actually looks like in AutoCAD.